The votes are in and the count is ongoing, but it has been a historic night in Australian politics, with the Liberal Party losing not only government, but those touted as its future, with heartland seats from WA to Queensland, New South Wales to Victoria, swept away in a teal tide. These are dramatic changes in our politics happening before our eyes. The teals are eating them alive. Warringah was called early for Zali Stegall, setting up an historic night for independence, in particular the so-called teal. Zali Stegall, you would have heard that. Anthony Glee Green has called it for you. This parliament will deliver the largest crossbench in Australian history, with at least 11 seats, but likely to be closer to 16. The previous record was six. Allegra Spender won in Wentworth. Zoe Daniel knocked off Tim Wilson in Goldstein. Safe Liberal seat, two-term incumbent. Independent. Kylie Tink has declared herself the winner in North Sydney, unseating Trent Zimmerman. Sophie Scamps looks good to take McKellar and Kate Cheney to take Curtin. In the biggest upset of the night, Monique Ryan looks set to unseat Josh Frydenberg, the man touted as a future Liberal PM. And so while it's mathematically possible that we win in Kuyong, it's definitely difficult. What message do you think that it sends to the major parties? The Liberal Party no longer reflects the smaller Liberal values of electorates like Kuyong. It's moved too far to the right. We want action on climate change. We want integrity and transparency in government. We want gender equity. We want women to feel safe in the streets. Greens leader Adam Band has hailed a green slide as the party recorded its best ever election result, winning two lower house seats and holding hopes for two more. Surprisingly, in Queensland. This is a great result that delivers a mandate for action on climate and action on inequality. Scott Morrison conceded the election. It's a difficult night for Liberals and Nationals around the country as nights like this always are. Thanking soldiers, police and tradies, but no nurses, teachers or retail workers who kept us going in the pandemic. You could say he stayed right on message right to the very end. Tonight, the Australian people have voted for change. Albanese hailed Australia as the greatest country in the world. It says a lot about our great country that the son of a single mum who was a disability pensioner, who grew up in public housing down the road in Camperdown, can stand before you tonight as Australia's Prime Minister. He also committed to the Uluru Statement from the Heart in a long overdue moment of reconciliation with Indigenous people. I commit to the Uluru Statement from the Heart in full. Labor may have won government, but it didn't win the popular vote. It also looks like having lost Christina Keneally after the electorate of Fowler rejected having someone parachuted in from outside the community. What we're seeing across the board again and again is that people are, being, are sick of having mm. their voting support taken for granted. Independents and minor parties who addressed the issues Australians care about won the nation's attention and their vote this election. Communities want their voice back, they want their vote back. And so I think it's a real moment, it's a new wave of politics, it's time for a climate change to Canberra. But after floods, fires and a pandemic, all in the same parliamentary term, Australia has finally had its climate change election. Together we can end the climate wars. The Liberal Party's moderate wing has been destroyed and faces its own reckoning about what sort of party the Liberal Party looks like as it moves forward. There is talk over whether it splits and what role the coalition will play in its own future. For now, the main question is whether Labor governs in a majority or with the support of the expanded crossbench. And the Senate looks like becoming a lot more progressive too. But there will be no rest, with Anthony Albanese, Penny Wong and Richard Miles all sworn in on Monday to enable Australia's new leadership to attend the Quad meeting in Japan. But for now, Australia, you have voted for change. Almost a decade of coalition government ends on Monday, and Australia's new leaders know they can't take you for granted.